Hey, Algebra 2, welcome back for part 2 of 5-3 inverses. Alright, so this is the back side of the notes, and for this one, um, we have a table of values. And so, here's our given inverse, or our given function, rather, and we would like to find the inverse of that. Alright, so this one, I'm going to do in red, or pink. And so this is just a bunch of ordered pairs. So I'm gonna plot these points. So that's the point one zero, and my eyes are getting old and this is gonna be challenging to get this right. Uh, let's see, there's two one, there's three zero, and that should be four two. All right, so all you had to do is plot those points. For our inverse, so you have to recall that what we said earlier, to find the inverse, all you have to do is flip your x and y. So I'm going to make a table of values. And so all these y's are going to move up here and become my x's. So I have 0, 1, 0, 2. All these x's flip and they become my y's. 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'm going to plot these points, 0, 1, 1, 2, 0, 3, and 2, 4, something like that. All right, so um, this one, this is a function, or yes, this is a function because none of my x's repeat. This one is not a function because uh, here at the x's, I have two zeros because my x's repeat at x equals zero. You could further see over here on the graph, if you run your vertical line test, here, when I make a vertical line, it fails because it passes two points. Uh, this one, it passes, it passes, and all the pinks pass if you drew a horizontal line. And I'm pretty sure I screwed that one up. I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be right there. Sorry, that one was hard to see. Uh, so anyway, um, these two are not... inverse functions because the the inverse is not a function. So just because you can take the inverse of it does not mean you necessarily have inverse functions. Uh, so when they are inverses of each other, we would say that they are inverse relations. So it's not inverse functions, but they are inverse relations. All right, so we have a given function, and we're going to do this one here. All right, so you have a couple of choices for, let me get this straightened up a little bit, for number six. All right, so this is in slope-intercept form, and so in slope-intercept form, I can tell that that is the slope of the line, and that right there is my y-intercept. So you could just graph this one um, and slope-intercept. So plot your first point at negative 2, go up 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, up 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. I think that's the best I can do. Connect the dots, and that is your line. Uh, or you can make a table of values. Table of values is a fantastic way to, um, to plot some points. All right, so when I'm choosing my x, you can choose any x that you want. When I notice that um, I have a coefficient of a fraction, I'm going to choose x values 
that are multiples of four so that I can cancel them out and I don't have to deal with decimals. All right, so I'm gonna go from smallest to largest and eight is a multiple of four, but I'm gonna start small, so I'm gonna use negative eight. And then the next multiple would be negative four and then zero, positive four, positive eight. All right, so you can stick it in your calculator. Um, if you wanted to write it out, so you have one fourth times negative eight over one minus two. So that reduces, you have negative two minus two, which is negative four. And then I would plug negative four in. So you have one fourth times negative four minus two. Those two cancel each other out. Negative one minus two is negative three. Then you plug zero in. A fourth of zero is zero. Zero minus two is negative two. And then you plug four in. A fourth of four is one. One minus two is negative one. And then you plug eight in. Uh, a fourth of eight is two, and two minus two is zero. All right, so there is one option. So when you want to find the inverse of it, so when you want to find the inverse, you could just flip x and y. That is one option. So when I flip x and y, For my x column, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0. Those are the y's, and then the y column are the x's. Negative 8, negative 4, 0, 4, 8. And so when you flip the x's and y's, I can see that this one is going to be a function because none of the x's repeat. All right, so I have... Eight. Uh, I'm going to plot negative two zero and zero eight. One two three four five six seven eight. All right. So any two points make a line. I ended up picking three of them so that I could have the most accurate line possible. All right. So the inverse of a line is another line. You're like, oh, they kind of have this interesting symmetry to them. That they do. Uh, the inverse is always the line um, y equals x. They are inverses, um, God, like rotated about that line. That's what's really happening here. Or you could always do the inverse of this. That is certainly an option. So to find the inverse, remember we said the first thing that you do is you flip x and y. So I would have x equals 1 fourth y minus 2. And then you solve for y. Okay, I'm going to add 2 to both sides. I knew I was going to run out of room. And I have x plus 2 equals 1 fourth y. So I have a fraction coefficient. I'm going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal, which is 4. Since I already had two terms on the left, you need to put parentheses around that. I'm going to distribute the 4 and get 4x plus 8, that cancels out, equals y. And sometimes we just stick a little negative 1 to show that is the inverse of it. Like, all right, so this has a slope of 4, and that one has a y-intercept of 8. All right, so it does have a y-intercept of 8. I do remember plotting that point 0, 8. I would run out of room if I went up 4 and right 1. So 1, 2, 3, could go down 4 and left 1 a handful of times, and you should end up at points on that line. So when you want to find an inverse, you have two choices. You could either um, 
find the inverse of the function, or you could jot down a table of values and take the inverse of the table of values. Either one is a fantastic idea. Uh, seven, eight are just more practice finding the inverse. Um, when it writes it like that, what is f negative one? That is the inverse notation, so that just says, hey, find the inverse of that function. Uh, determine if these two are inverses. So you're gonna find the inverse of this one, and you're gonna find the inverse of this one. And if you find the inverse of the f function, you get g, and then you find the inverse of g, you get f, then you would say, yes, they are inverses. If you get different functions, then no, they are not. Check the notes for the answers. Thank you so much.